Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church. Welcome to those who are here and those who are viewing us from home. As we did last Sunday, this is the second Sunday of the new year, we're going to review the scripture and open our worship with the thoughts for the new year. First, from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Hear the word of the Lord. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And also, from Psalm 29, verses 1 and 2, and then skipping to verses 10 and 11. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as the king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Word of the Lord. Amen. Today, of course, is installation of officers uh, and ordination, uh, ordination and installation of officers, as you'll see in your bulletin. Also, Thursday is the session meeting at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. Also, if you have not done so, uh, you'll see in your bulletin a request for your updated information of phone, email, address, etc. And if you have already done so, or you think that uh, your information is still the same as last year, please submit it anyway so that um, the new system can have it in and prepare for the directory as such. Next week, in your announcements, you will see ads for um, a permanent part-time administrative assistant and for a permanent Sunday morning organist. We have met and developed those ads, and the announcements have been sent to several sites uh, with those job opportunities. However, if you know of anyone as a possible candidate for an administrative assistant or an organist, please have them submit a resume and uh, contact information for three references. So you'll be seeing more about that as we go, but I know it's now on our um, website and our, our Facebook page, so we wanted you to know that indeed uh, we have developed that and are looking forward to reviewing possible candidates. But if you have input, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, also, I want to thank the work crew who hung the banner. It's not an easy job. It's an engineering feat that those guys do so well. And um, we thank them for that. And also those people who worked to undecorate um, the sanctuary and organize it so it's clearly ready for next year. Um, thank you. Thank you for those people. Are there other announcements? Hearing none, let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we listen to the prelude.
Blessings to all in our second Sunday of this new year, 2023. Everyone got the date, writing the new year down correctly on your checks and correspondence yet. It usually takes a while. Glad to see all of you here. This is one of my favorite holy days. We don't necessarily think of it very often as a big holy day. It's not decorated with Christmas decorations. The second Sunday of every year is always Baptism of the Lord Sunday. The first Sunday is often when we celebrate Epiphany, but the second Sunday, and that happened to fall on January 1st last week. So this is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, which is always an appropriate Sunday for things like ordination, installation, new membership, that all resort back to our membership vows. You'll find in your bulletin an insert that will help guide you through that part of the service. Officer elects when you're coming forward for ordination or installation, make sure that you bring that insert up here with you so that you'll have it to read from. So um, just wanted to make that clear to you. And when we sing our opening hymn, um, you're gonna wanna wait and let our organist today, Megan, play it once through because it's not an entirely familiar hymn. So we're going to try to do this when we take note that someone may not be, some may not be entirely familiar hymns. We'll sing them once through or play them once through before you sing. So I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that that will happen. For now, I'd ask you to stand and come into a place of worship with a very familiar way of being called into worship. The uh, Psalm 23 that I have written down in the King James Version in unison. Let us read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're consciously aware that that's got all your ifs in it, and may not be something that um, people who are not used to reading the King James, but it's what we usually have memorized. So we're using that version now. So we're opening to hymn number nine in your hymns of faith. And we'll listen as Megan plays it once through before we sing with great joy having heard it and hopefully volume as well together as a congregation. So Megan, when you're ready.
just said the Lord's Prayer twice, once said and once sung. Knowing the Lord is our shepherd and that he provides for us and he gives us all that we need, that includes our forgiveness of sin. So we stand together and silently confess our sin, and then we'll be in a prayer of confession that comes from Paul's letter to Titus. Let us stand silently at first. In unison from Titus we pray. At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Amen. Let us also be assured in the next verses that fall in Titus responsively. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Jesus to come and to yield the sword, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And so in unison we say, Scripture cannot be set aside. What does Scripture say? Lord, we turn to you and we ask that you help our thoughts and attitudes of our hearts and minds to be revealed. And may our hearts and minds be turned to you to truly hear and heed your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Those who have your Bibles, please open to Acts 14, verse 20. And this is on page 1574 in your pew Bible. We'll be moving through a few passages. You may recollect that before Founders Day, in the fall, we had been moving through the book of Acts. And then because we were moving into the Advent season and into the Christmas season, we took a break from the book of Acts and we're returned there now. So hear this reading from Acts 14, beginning at verse 20 and moving through 28, and then another reading at Acts 20. The next day, he and Barnabas, that is Paul, left for Derby. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord and whom they had put their trust. And we're going to actually finish that reading there and move to chapter 20 now. We move to page 1594. I'm sorry, it's actually 84. And we're, we're on verse uh, 17, and then we'll move to verses 28 and 29. 
From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. So there's another church where elders are appointed. And this he says to those elders in verse actually 28, we'll read. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. So we see in the book of Acts that when churches were established, that there were elders, and in other parts of Acts, we read also deacons, both who will be installed and ordained elders and deacons today. Paul then also writes letters to churches and to the pastors of churches concerning the appointments of deacons and elders. He writes to Timothy, who is the pastor over the church of Ephesus, but we're going to look what we already read as our confession and as our assurance from Titus, but we're going to Titus chapter 1. This is actually on page 1699 as in your pew Bible. So hear these verses from Titus as Paul writes to him, beginning at verse 4. To Titus, my true son in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town. So there's Paul the pastor, and he has the role of being involved in the appointment of elders, just as you'll see that will happen today, that I'll have a role in that. He does this in Crete, an island off of where Ephesus is in the middle of the Mediterranean, and he is the pastor of the church in Crete. Then he continues on to explain to Titus what traits to look for and what traits to look um, behaviors should not be practiced in order for an elder to be qualified. And the same is true in the letter to Timothy for elders and deacons. But today we're reading verses 6 through 9, the talk of these traits. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose, child, whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Now note that he talks in the gender, the male gender. And so we might think, oh, well, this means elders should only be male. Well, actually, when Paul wrote letters, he did write to the males, but he also commended women. If we would look at the end of one of Paul's letters to the church, we would see a commendation to Phoebe. Phoebe was a trustee, an elder over a house church. So there were female and male elders, but more commonly male. Let's continue on with verse 7. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing. So again, there's the language we heard in Acts. An elder is an overseer. He's a manager. She is a manager of the household, of the house church, just like we have a house church. He must be blameless. That is, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. This is the verse we will concentrate on. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. So the focus is always on an elder understanding the message, the word of God, the scripture. And so you might be wondering, are the elders and the deacons that are coming before us today are they adhering to what Titus and Timothy says? Well, our nominating committee in their training was trained to, to look to that, to see. But the place where the focus was especially was in that 
of elders and deacons who are present for the scripture, for the preaching and the teaching of the word of God. So we have people on the nominating committee who chaired the committee, Rogers back there, he had submitted the names before you at a congregational meeting. And he knows that we know who are the ones who, because we have to keep track of it every week, who is in regular worship, who is here, especially on a weekly basis, so that they can sit under the word of God and receive. Who comes to be a part of the teaching or might even be teachers themselves. And there were other parts of the membership vows that were looked at, but especially sitting under teaching in the way of what is preached on a Sunday morning or what is taught is an important um, being part of the teaching. So with that, um, this Thursday, as Sally mentioned, we are having our session meeting. So we actually have started doing teaching to the elders in the session because they need to sit under teaching. So we're gonna take even more than what you're hearing today to teach the elders at that session meeting. So here's some scriptures. If we look to the scripture beyond Titus and Timothy to understand this aspect of an elder. Now I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses um, derived from verses 2 through 5. Now the overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be able to teach. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? And then we'll, we also have the scriptures from Titus that we heard today, and we have the scripture from the book of Acts that teach us about elders being overseers and being um, also called shepherds. The word for pastor is the word that is only used once in the New Testament. It is the word shepherd, but the shepherd is not just the pastor. The shepherd, the overseer, the manager is also the elders, but we're not the main shepherds. Who is the shepherd? We just read it in our call to worship. Who is the shepherd? There we go. The Lord is our shepherd. We are following him. We fall under his teaching, and that is important. For us, when we are overseeing, whether we are managing, when, when we are being stewards of the church that he has made us under shepherds to, we must look to him first of all, and we must receive his guidance before we can guide others. So I'm not going to take a long time giving you this message today. Why? It's pretty straightforward. You've heard it. We're going to see it and hear it acted out at our time of installation and ordination. So consider this sermon part one and part two. So that's the sermon for today. And because we're asking our sa sha Savior, who is our shepherd, to lead us, can we now stand and sing from Hymns of Faith 408, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. And this is a tune I understand that many of you should be familiar with. So let's sing together.
Now we have your insert that we're using that's in your bulletin. Again, officer elects, bring them up with you as I call you and I'll tell you where's the best place to stand. The baptismal font and the water are supposed to be visible. Can you see it? Everyone can see it. And so now we have a statement on baptism and this is responsive. So be prepared to participate. I'll pour the water first. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling. In baptism, officers elect were clothed with Christ and are now called by God through the voice of the church to enter into ministries of service and governance, announcing in word and deed the good news of Jesus Christ. We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ and we celebrate God's particular call to our brothers and sisters. So we're remembering with joy our common calling, and that's why on occasions like this one, we all stand and we all reaffirm our baptismal covenant. So would you stand and answer the questions that will be addressed to all of you? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Amen. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Amen. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you, with God's help? The creed that was written for baptism and new membership is the Apostles' Creed. That's why on occasions like the one today, we stand and we affirm our faith through this creed, together in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now we move from the statement of baptism to the statement of ordination and installation, also to be spoken responsibly. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples and servants of our Lord, our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular services as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is a Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, 
and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Our clerk of session, Sally, will now step forward to present our officer elects. And as you come forward, I would ask that you stand here in front of the steps for a time. Come forward as your name is called by Sally. You can stand in any order. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of First Presbyterian Church of Pataskala, now ordains Anna Conrad, Dave Johnson, to the office of deacon, and Robert Holland, and Brent Miller, to the office of ruling elder, and installs them along with outer elect Jean Johnson to active service. Are you okay standing for a few questions? Okay, because then I'll, you'll have a place you can be seated right over here. Okay. So I'm going to ask you all now the questions of ordination, installation as deacons and as elders, and you will answer them accordingly. So the first questions are for all officers, whether deacon or whether elder. And before you accepted this, I had given you these questions and ask if you could affirm that you would be able to answer in the positive. All of you said, yes, I can. So they already, they got trained and they got tested and they're ready to go. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's policy, polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you, in your own life, seek to follow Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? This question is for Dave and for Anna as deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And these questions are for the elders alone for Robert, for Brent, and for Jean. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Now I'd like to have all of you move over to where you'll be, so behind, these kneelers. Jean, you can have a seat here in the front. So the rest of you, if you'd stand behind the kneelers, and then I'll have you kneel at the right time. So if you'll just go behind the kneelers, don't kneel yet. And while we're waiting for them to gather, um, one of the other things that the nominating committee realized is that every person who has been asked to, to take office have already been serving. We'll start with Jean. She has been serving and helping with Christian education. She is the um, assistant of Christian education and especially over adult <coughs> discipleship. She is also, uh, along with her husband, Dave, the leader of the intercessory prayer team. And those are the main ministries that she has of late has been a part of. Is that correct, Jean? So thank you for, thank you for your service. Dave, as I said, is also one 
who is helping with um, leading the intercessory prayer team, but together as a couple. Another role that they have is acting as ministers of mercies to quite a number of people in the church. Some of you in this church are getting care through Dave and Jean as well as care through me. So thank you for your services also of mercy and compassion. Anna had helped out with Vacation Bible School. She's done that many, many times. And she also, like her mother, she was raised in the right way. She has a great heart for mission and outreach. So Anna, thank you for your service as well. Um, Brent, as you know, had been for, as we've been between an organist, he's been up at that organ trying to learn and at the piano, though he has decided with a little grandson that we've all met, Cole, he will no longer do that, but what he has done is he has actually taken many hymns that are used for funerals, and he has digitally recorded them so that when we don't have an organist or we're at a um, graveside, we can play those songs and accompany um, people who are singing. Bren is also coming on to serve on our, um, to support the staff. He's accepted the role to be a financial reviewer and he also is um, going to be on a chair of the nominating committee. So um, Brent, thank you for your service and your service coming. Robert, you don't always see him face to face because he flies up high in the balcony. He's usually behind the computer working everything. He's also there to help with children's ministry along with his wife. We're so happy to have your family and Emily, a part of our church. And thank you for helping the homebound members to be able to see the service. So Robert has been serving faithfully as well. So these are not people who um, haven't already been serving. They're now just going to be stepping into serving in a new way as leaders of the church. And so we move now onto the bulletin into the prayer of ordination. And we just begin at the beginning of the prayer where everyone will remain standing. And then I will ask you um, in turn to kneel. So we begin the prayer with, and I'll pray it, eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equip them with your gifts. Among your people, Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need. In the church, deacons, ruling elders, and pastors served together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age, O oh God, and for the church of Jesus Christ, we give you all thanks and praise. I'm going to ask first um, our two elders being ordained, Robert and Brent, if you would each kneel. As is often the case, and I told you what was happening, they all know this, there's no surprise. They knew they were nailing, they knew they were gonna be anointed. I'm anointing them with oil, which often happened as signs of leadership in the Bible. And then when we all go to pray for them, I would ask all of you to extend out your hands as a, as a sign of laying on hands of these leaders of the church. So Brent, remember your baptism, for you have been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Robert, remember your baptism, for you have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we would put out our hands and raise up this paragraph of prayer towards Brent and Robert. This is for their ordination. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Robert and Brent. Yes, you can pray it with me if you'd like. Uh, Robert and Brent that they may be faithful ruling elders in the church. Give them prudence and sound judgment, wisdom and courage to order the life of the church in obedience to your word. Nourish them in the life of the Holy Spirit so that they may exercise the ministry of discipline with humility and compassion. Guide them in, well, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Guide them in governance, on this session and in every court of the church that they may be servant leaders following Christ who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Give them joy in their walk of faith 
and a sure sense of your abiding presence for their work of ministry. You may stand. And now, Dave and Anna, I would ask that you take a place, and I will or anoint you with oil, and again, we'll put out our hands. Dave, remember your baptism, for you have been baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Anna, you have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us put out our hands towards Dave and Anna and pray for them, and you can join in the prayer as well. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Anna and Dave that they may be faithful deacons in the church. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit's leading that they may see and serve wherever there is need. Train them in the school of prayer that they may express the compassion of Christ to the poor and friendless, the sick, the grieving, and the troubled. Equip them with courage to bear the gospel into the halls of power and to communicate your presence and might among those who are powerless. In everything, give them the mind of Christ who did not grasp at greatness but emptied himself to become a servant of your reign. Give them joy in their walks of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for his work of ministry. You may stand as we finish the prayer. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world, sustain this congregation in ministry, Ground us in the gospel, secure in our hope in Christ. Strengthen our service to the outcasts and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And Sally now is going to have a constitutional question of the congregation. Do members of the church accept Anna, Brent, Dave, Jean, and Robert as deacons and ruling elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead you in a way of Jesus Christ? Do you? Do you agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide you, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do you? Before I give the charge, thank you, Sally, thank you very much. Um, we have certificates for those who are um, ordained. Um, installations happen over and over again. Do you have an ordination certificate? We'll make sure we get one made for you and look up that date, Jean, okay? But we don't have it today, because I thought you would have received one. So, Robert, blessings in your ministry. As an elder, Brent, blessing in your ministry as an elder you are now ordained as a rolling elder of first presbyterian church anna blessings in your ministry as a deacon and dave you are now ordained as a deacon in first presbyterian church notice that right yeah we can do that and then we give the charge from no coincidence here second timothy we've just been hearing about this so receive this um charge you are ruling elders and deacons in the church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. So, according to 2 Timothy 2.15, be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. As directed in 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one appointed by him and a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Now you may clap, and we'll, get, we'll have them go to their seats after I give some hugs, if that's okay. God bless you. We're so glad.
Appropriately following this segment of the service, we move to call of stewardship. Stewardship is the giving of our offerings and tithes um, and, and, and giving of financial means, but also of giving of service. So one of the things it says as members that all members should examine their, um, their membership and decide if God is calling them to serve in, in ways that maybe they haven't done before. Um, so think about your membership vows, the gifts that you have been given, because I'm looking out here, and I'm going to tell you something. There is not a single person seated in this service that does not have gifts as the Spirit. It's not just those who have been ordained. You all, when you receive Jesus, you have received the Holy Spirit within you. And the Holy Spirit comes upon you and empowers you with gifts. And if you're wondering and say, Pastor, I don't know what my gift is, come to me and I'll help you discover it. New members or those who are considering members have sat with me and we've talked about that and we've explored it. And I do this with every person. So some of you have been here for a long time. Maybe we haven't had the conversation, but it's a conversation I love to have. So contemplate your uh, stewardship of tithes and talents as we hear the offertory now.
speaking of stewardship of talents and gifts. Thank you, Kathy. That was a perfect selection. Thank you, Megan, also for your gift. These are two other people who give us a gift of exhortation and praise and music. Kathy will be leading the music next week, whereas Megan was leading and playing the hymns this week. And then the following week, we have an organist that is returning that we have enjoyed. Um, Dr. Rebecca Abbott will be back. So people are working as a team to show forth their gifts. Let us pray over the gifts that we bring as well. Loving and gracious Lord, you say in your word that we all have gifts for the common good and that we're lacking nothing. We may not always see it, we may not always know it, but it is truth. So Lord, help us to use every gift that you give us. And also the gift of resources. Help us to be mindful of your providing as the Lord's Prayer says, we shall not want. You are the one who gives us everything that we need. And so we return it to you, we consecrate it, and we ask that you use it for your purpose. You have blessed us for us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We move now to um, our insert to look to see what our prayer concerns are, but also to be in touch with what God has called to our hearts and minds and the way of prayers as we have been in the church among our friends and our family, in the community, and listening to the news. So um, let us pray as Jesus intercedes. Father, we thank you that you sent your son who came into this world who discovered that though there is much suffering here, he also knew the joy of being a human being like us. And he got to appreciate the world as you do. We thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have given us during the Christmas season for the receiving of gifts such as I have received for gifts that we receive for celebrations such as birthdays and for anniversaries, for celebration of the ordination and installation today. We thank you, Lord, that you are directing our path into our future. We thank you, Lord, for our congregation who remembers each other with sending cards themselves. So we thank you for the upcoming directory so that we can stay in touch and be the body of Christ together within this congregation. We also pray, Lord, for not just leaders of the church, and we certainly pray for them, and we thank you that they pray for us, but we also pray for leaders of governments. You have told us whether we agree or disagree, we should always pray for those who are in authority, but also um, follow the, their authority, though not always every decision that must be done in consciousness. We pray for leaders in government and the nation, in the state, in the region, in our county, in our community, in education, in business, in schools, and in all walks of life. We pray for countries that are struggling, Lord. We pray for entire continents that are struggling. And we thank you for those who have heard your call and that serve there and the way of reaching out in mission and outreach. And for those who are nearby in this church that have a heart to do the same. We pray, Lord, for our sister congregation of sorts, Altville Presbyterian, who's in a point of transition with the retirement of their pastor, Kay. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering in ways where human beings act against each other, 
and human trafficking, domestic violence, gang violence, but also for natural disasters as well. We pray for those who are traveling and are not able to be with us, those who are homebound and are not able to be with us, and those who are with us or not who are in this point of grief, coming out of the holidays and moving into the cold and dark season of winter where sometimes depression and anxiety just increases during this time of year. We pray for the caregivers of those who suffer as well. We especially think of those who deal with the awful situation of cancer. We lift up in particular Jim Charles, who is waiting on uh, January the 18th to have a scan, which we hope will show effective results of the treatments for the lung cancer. And we are also praying for Randy Conaway to get the biopsy results back because waiting is hard. And we pr continue to pray for him. And we still believe into healing and we wait to hear it in whatever form that might be. We also pray, Lord, for others who are suffering cancer long and short and ask for you to be with them. We pray for those who are, um, and thank you for the recovering, for those who have had really extreme surgery in the distant um, past, for Mike Jones, Laura's brother, who came through his neck surgery and is in recovery, for Summer White, 12-year-old cousin of Melissa, who is uh, recovering from spinal scoliosis. A prayer request that isn't on here because it was requested after the announcements and prayers were printed. We pray for Cindy Horn, who is going for um, an appointment to get a biopsy for nodules that are on her thyroid, but also for her baby granddaughter, Eleanor, who was to go for an MRI on Friday. And because she was sick, it was delayed. She is in severe pain, O oh Lord. You know that. She needs an answer. And she has been given an appointment the beginning of February, February the 6th, to have to wait all that time. It's too long, Lord. She has an appointment with her pediatrician tomorrow. We ask, Lord, that you move mountains, hills, or paperwork, whatever is necessary, to get this little girl in for her appointment. Because we know, Lord, you say, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. We pray for children young and children of all ages. We pray because you have taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He will continue to lead us as we go from this place. Just because we leave this site doesn't mean we leave worship. We continue worship wherever we go. And so let us pray and sing hymn 410, He Leadeth Me.
picture that? God walking beside you and taking you by his hand, leading you as you go from here. With that, we move into the blessing and charge because look what we say is our first part, the vision. To walk in the light of God, making Jesus known is first at first. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy the blessing of this day. Be led by him.